Someone once wrote that if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. By that measure, Peter Brock has been one of the most idle men in the history of the automobile. But the reality is, he's an industry icon, a racer, designer, innovator, instructor, historian, photographer, and author. Growing up in the hot rod culture of California, cars were focused for Peter from age 12. Too young to race, he indulged his interest by photographing them and sketching designs. At 16, he acquired his first car, an MGTC. That was followed by a 46 Ford convertible which he customized, adding a Cadillac engine. The Fordalac won the prestigious Oakland National Roadster Show in back-to-back -back years while Peter was still in high school. Passing up admission to Stanford, he applied at the Art Center College of Design in Pasadena. Told that he needed to submit a portfolio of his work, Peter pulled out a three-ring binder, sketched a few concepts, and presented his new portfolio. He was admitted, and despite a steep learning curve, he thrived. So much so that at just 19, Peter became the youngest ever hire at General Motors Styling in Detroit, working under design legend Bill Mitchell. Despite his youth, Peter played a key role in creating the first Corvette hardtop, the iconic 1963 Stingray Split Window Coupe. Once he turned 21 and eligible to race, Peter returned to California. A chance meeting at the track led to a job at Max Belkowski's famed Hollywood Motors race shop. There, Peter came to the attention of Carol Shelby, who was looking for someone to run his new driving school, a part of Shelby American. Peter became the first paid employee. He was soon crafting the company's image in logos, advertising, letterhead, merchandise, and car liveries. He designed components for the Cobra Roadster, the Shelby GT350, the Lang Cooper, the Nethercut Mirage, and the Di Tommaso P70. But Peter's greatest contribution to Shelby lore came when Carroll decided to take his U.S. road racing champion Cobras to face Europe's best in the World Championship. Peter knew the Cobra Roadsters, with their blunt noses and open cockpits, were no match for the sleek Ferrari GTO coupes on such high-speed circuits as Daytona, Sebring, Monza, Spa, and Le Mans. He also knew the solution. At GM, Peter had studied the pre-war work of German aerodynamicist Wunibald Kamm, who proved that fully enclosed, streamlined bodywork featuring a stubby rear end that became known as the cam tail, reduced drag and increased top speed. Peter proposed mounting a sleek hard top body and cam tail on a Cobra chassis, thus creating the Shelby Cobra Coupe. Skeptics sneered at the idea, but the Cobra Coupe shattered the top speed and fuel mileage numbers of the Roadster. At the 1964 Daytona 2000 kilometers, a pit fire denied the Coupe a crushing debut victory but earned it the name Daytona. At Le Mans, the car clocked an astonishing 197 miles per hour, carrying Dan Gurney and Bob Bondurant to victory in the GT class over Ferrari. A year later, the cars claimed the first FIA International GT Championship of Manufacturers for an American mark. The Daytona Cobra Coupe later became the first automobile named to the National Archives of the Library of Congress as an historically significant vehicle. Following his Shelby years, Peter founded Brock Racing Enterprises, becoming the factory race team for Japan's Datsun brand. They won an SCCA regional championship at their first attempt. National championships followed and a pair of Trans Am titles. Peter's virtuosity has created hang gliding designs that set world records. He returned to his alma mater to teach. He produced photography and wrote articles for magazines and authored books on the cars that brought his designs to life. On this 60th anniversary of Shelby American, we are proud to name the legendary company's first and in so many ways its most impactful employee as our American Speed Festival Master of Motorsports. We honor Peter Brock for his lifetime of innovation, excellence, and achievement.